So today um, we're going to talk about Zoom app versus the, because there is an actual app for your phone and your computer versus the uh, the actual mobile website or the website itself, because you can access it two ways. Uh, we're going to go from basics, so screen sharing, sound sharing, which I didn't know you could do, file sharing, um, all these things you can really, really use to kind of replace some of the um, benefits of in-person meetings um, that without having to you know go the distance and make that drive and, and um, just being able to do it from the comfort of your own home while your clients can still feel um, you know that you are uh, giving them the ultimate experience and um, some things like um, showing your zoom screen of the uh, compliance documents and using annotation and stuff to take them through it I think you'll find to be really really helpful. Um, it also can be fun. There's lots of interactive elements on Zoom as well. So we're going to look at some of these funny um, filters and stuff. And then customization. So there's lots of customizing. We can, I can see some of you already have your own uh, backgrounds up, which is great. Um, but did you know that you can basically put anything in the background? So now it's holiday season upon us, right? We might want to have like some snowmen or, you know, um, maybe even your logo with a Santa hat on it, something along those lines. Um, so just I'll show you just how easy that is. Um, and we can create our own in Canva or such like that. Uh, if you're with Mortgage Architects, we do have available on our MA link, uh, a whole package of Zoom backgrounds that you can use. I see Kathy on the line here has hers up. So thanks for the great example, Kathy. Um, or um, there are a lot of websites actually that offer them for free too. So, and you can pick, you know, do you want holiday? Do you want summer? Do you want beach ways, whatever it may be, um, lots of those are available at no charge, okay? And then last but not least, a lot of people have trouble recording meetings or figuring out how to record, how to stop recording, and then how to then share that recording um, afterwards. Um, or they're also not aware that they can edit the recording. Um, very simple edits, we're just allowed to kind of trim the edges. So maybe if you give a long, you know, intro spiel or something like I often do, um, you might want to cut it short uh, or, you know, a portion of that meeting where um, it's not really useful to pass that information on. Um, we're going to look at how to do that too. Okay, there's an app for that. So Apple or Android, doesn't matter what you're using, you can go and download the Zoom app for free by just going to uh, Google Play Store would be on your Android or your Apple um, App Store if you're an Apple user. I myself am, am an Apple user and I can confirm that uh, it's very compatible with Apple, this app on my phone. When I'm on the road, which happens quite a bit, especially lately, um, and I have to take a meeting, it's no problem. I can just log in on the app on my phone and it behaves almost as if um, I'm on the actual desktop and I'm sitting at my computer. So suffice to say, you don't have to be at home in front of your computer to take these meetings, okay, which can offer up a lot more of our time. You know, maybe you're like waiting for your kid to finish hockey or, you know, um, commuting somewhere or whatnot. Like you could actually you know, fill those gaps with meeting times. Um, if you, you know, you got your phone set up on a stand in your car, they can see you, you can still kind of glance at the camera, etc. So I have actually been taking advantage of that because, you know, there's not enough hours in the day to get everything done. And I found that it's been fine. And it's just like talking on the phone when you're driving, right? We can do that. So why can't we just also have um, optional camera there as well? Um, it looks really great, you know, behaves completely compatible with all phones. Um, the only thing I'll say is what there's only one thing that you, with the mobile app, um, you can't really make a ton of customizations. Like if you're gonna be you know, making meetings, making changes to your settings and stuff, uh, that should be done on the actual Zoom website, okay? Um, the only feature that the app has that the website doesn't is that allows you to call in. So, Let's say you're in an area with, you know, not good internet service or uh, you're having trouble connecting via, you know, via uh, self-service or internet. Um, Zoom, when you create a meeting, will actually give you a number to call in alternatively as well if you're just wanting to uh, join in on a call. And so sometimes, you know, if you're on the road for service areas, you might find it works a lot better just to call in. Um, and uses less of your data. So definitely an option there. And again, calling in by phone is only available on the mobile app.
All right. So sharing, let's talk about sharing. How many times have you heard, uh, you know, can you share your screen? Uh, I can't, I can't figure out how to share. Uh, you know, I, I don't know how to record. I don't know how to do. It's very, very simple, guys. Zoom was pretty much built to be instruction free. Now, that being said, they do have, of course, um, on those Zoom website, which I'll share the link at the end with you. They have a ton of really great instructions um they've done a very good job of breaking everything down with like videos and step by step so anything you need to find out just go and google it and you know zoom itself has made a tutorial and then there's also like you know youtubers and blogs and people who have branched off to to uh, make their own and sometimes the consumer written articles uh, are the better ones i actually did consult some myself uh, for this presentation so when you're on your screen um, it might happen that you don't see this black bar, okay? So if you're all looking right now um, at your screen, chances are this bar is not popped up. Um, you just need to wiggle your mouse around. So that's where I think a lot of people get lost is they're like, uh, I don't see how to turn my camera on or I don't see you know, any buttons. What are you talking about? Well, they just need to you know, swiggle your mouse around and usually it's on the top or the bottom, this black bar that offers all uh, the options available. Another thing people get stuck on is this more button. They don't think um, to press it to, to, whoops, sorry, to find the other features. So they might say, oh, this one is an offering uh, to take a poll or something, you know, one of the uh, available uh, settings, but it's just because your screen size that it's had to put them under the more button. So make sure to click the more button to see all the options you have. And, you know, take a minute you, right now or afterwards to play around with it. You know, even jump on the Zoom by yourself. Uh, why not create a meeting for one, jump on and play around with it um, with these features and uh, just see how easy it is to, to use them and, and how they can help you out. With the sharing, um, so usually we think of screen sharing, right? That's pretty common. Um, great feature, especially if you're working through maybe uh, compliance docs with your client and you know you want to go through line by line, highlight certain sections, etc. Uh, this share feature is super great because you can you know, be looking at the exact same document, zoom in wherever necessary. And then we're even gonna look at how to annotate um, afterwards, which is a really cool feature I learned about too. So when sharing as well, you don't have to share your whole desktop, okay? Maybe you have, you know, confidential emails or things like that, that you don't wanna accidentally click on and, and show on your screen. So instead, when you click new share, um, it allows you options. Do you wanna just share, you know, one uh, tab on your, your browser? Do you want to share, um, you know, only one present, like one PDF that's open on the screen, or do you want to share the whole screen? Okay, so make sure to think about that because we don't want to accidentally, you know, share a screen and whoopsie, oops, there's a lot of confidential client information on the screen that I didn't realize I was sharing. So just keep that in mind when sharing. You can be selective. It's super easy. Um, and another thing, you can share sound. So if you're wanting to play a video, anything along those lines, um, yes, they can hear if you play it, but I find it very low quality, kind of crackly, um, hard to hear. So a way around that is to click the new share and then it'll allow you to share sound. So sometimes when I start off these sessions, I'm playing a song um, and I usually use this route as I go new share and I go share computer sound. And that just makes it you know, more direct to you guys um, and more clear for you as well. I'm just going to pop in the chat here. You don't have a couple of the options. Okay. Okay. Kimberly, I'm going to ask you, thanks for bringing that up right now. Um, if you can really click this more, do you see the three dots? That's what I'm wondering. I'm wondering if it's just because you're sharing your screen. I don't know if anybody else can see the more while you're doing that. Maybe that's the problem, but I don't actually have the more. Hmm. Okay. Just, it could be that I don't have the more either. Okay, so don't have I'll try it when we're not on this thing, on this yeah. share, see if it shows up. It might be, you know what? It might be an account upgrade. Do you have a free version? No, I pay for mine. No, you pay. Me too. Okay, I pay for mine as well. Okay, maybe maybe um we need to update it too. Maybe there's been an update go around um that you have not, not caught on to yet. Um, but we can definitely, yeah, take that offline and look into that because I don't see why 
you know, you wouldn't be able to use those features. So yeah, definitely um, worth looking into, but the ones that you'll use the most will be the share, uh, the record, the video, and the mute. So those are probably the most important ones to take uh, pay attention to. Um, no, it's not because you're not the host. So that's a common misconception that people think that they have to be designated as the host in order to share, uh, to have some of these options. That might be possible, but technically um, you should still be able to see the share button and hit it. It will just pop up with a message saying need permission from host. So then I would just have to give you permission. Um, but probably some of the features you aren't seeing is because I am technically the host of this. Now, that being said, um, if let's say, you know, we're in a meeting and maybe Kimberly needs to take over for me, let's pretend we're colleagues um, and I have to jump off, but this, I'm the host and this, this meeting is under my account. So therefore, if I exit, everyone's shut out, right? The whole thing shuts down. So to avoid that, it's very easy. You just um, you just click on somebody's name in the in the where, where section is it? So to pull up mine, it in the um, participants. So click on the participants here, and then next to their name, there should be like a little more option, and you click to make host. Or if you want to share, um, share the admin kind of settings abilities, you click co-host. Okay, so host is like I'm handing the reins over to you. I now need your permission to sh to share my screen, etc. Co-host is I'm just sharing um, the same privileges that I have with you. Okay, so we can also share files. This is really great because um, if you're on, you know, with a client, you've got forms. Um, that you want to send to them after going through them or something and you know instead of going through email in the chat it'll allow you so this is what this is a screenshot of the chat um you should see a button that says um, share files okay that is easy to do to upload files um, and then they can download them on their end um, just note this do you see this two and then it's designated to everyone Note that you can share with only one person um, or only the host or only the participants or everyone. Okay, so you can be specific if it's more of a private document just for one client on the line. Um, make sure that it's set to that client's name and then it will only go to them. Uh, same thing works with the chat. So if you're wanting to chat with just one person online, go ahead and in the two this is the chat box, select their name, okay? Just keep in mind, if the meeting is recorded, all the chat's recorded as well. So the host will be able to see the chat afterwards, okay? All right, this is such a cool feature that I don't think I've ever heard of anybody actually uh, knowing it exists. <laughs> um, you can share and take and give control of a mouse. So have you ever worked for a company where you know you had to have an IT guy log in to your computer from like remote login from a distance and they can take control of the mouse and and you know work your computer for you well you can actually do that through zoom which is pretty cool because i can let's say i'm online with my client and um they're struggling to find the point the part of the document i'm speaking about but um i can but it's there you know they're the host i can just request permission uh to take over their mouse and then I'll literally be able to move their mouse on their screen to show them you know highlight the section that I'm I'm um, speaking about so it's very easy to do if you want to try it out um, I just suggest Google like you know how to request remote control um, I can also and if anyone wants to email me I can send you these instructions but really I just found these from a quick Google um, and yeah, steps one to four, just how you go ahead, request remote control is what they call it. Um, and then you can also kind of take it back or end it at any point in time. All right, interactivity. So creating a poll, this is something fun um, you can do if you're having like a team meeting, you know, or you wanna find it, maybe you have a group of clients on the line and you wanna find a time there were even realtors referral partner that works commonly for you all to meet up, you know, 
a day in, in January or something. And instead of throwing out dates around, you can just create a poll very easily, um, you know, put a couple questions in and then when they just click on the poll and select their option there. So it's kind of, if you've ever used SurveyMonkey for like trying to find a common time in a calendar, that works. It's the same thing, really. Um, and I think I think it would be fun to use for team meetings as well. Like, what's your number one question uh, going into the new year kind of thing? Everybody take your vote or make a suggestion. Um, so the more we utilize these tools, I think that the, the more uh, uh, um, rich and engaging interactive experience we can have, even though we're remote and not in person. Uh, you can also download the results and share to keep in mind. Okay, annotation, <laughs> I love this because it makes me feel like a teacher <laughs> on a whiteboard or something. And this is like the same, these, this tool came out from online learning, um, you know, pr prior to Zoom even existing, there has been online learning for many, many years. Um, and this annotation tool is a part of it where you can kind of pull up a whiteboard, um, you can type, you can draw, um, you can allow them to draw, or you can pull up even just highlighter to, um, if I have a document open, I can highlight a certain section of it too. Um, so let me see, I'm gonna just click annotate on my end. And what's popped up for me is, you guys can't see it, but it looks just like this. So I clicked annotate on my black zoom options bar. It's popped up like this for me, where I can draw, write, whatever. And, look at the spotlight do you see this how my mouse if you follow my mouse it's now like spotlit and you can see where I'm pointing that's so good for trying to point out you know lines and text and things like that um you can draw as well so maybe I want to draw I want to highlight this line of text clients so in real time I can draw and say read this you know exit out that Make sure to pay attention to this section, uh, all those fun things. And you can always just click back to, to erase. Um, there's an eraser, there's a stamp tool text, okay? So you can really make it your own and, and you should be able to have almost as if you're in-person interactions um, just by using these tools. Notes are possible too. So if you're in a meeting and team meeting maybe and you wanna take notes, there is actually a note screen um, again, under the options there to record notes. And then those notes can be visible for everybody. Uh, so we don't have to email them around afterwards or everybody can add to them. Um, so again, just making it as if like replicating an in-person experience, um, except you can be anywhere. <laughs> Okay, a little bit about customization. This is kind of where it gets a little bit more fun. Uh, so virtual backgrounds, some of us online have them right now. Um, they're really easy to add to to even make your you know your your brand, your logo. You should have one already. If you don't, you know, see about getting one made. Again, we do have. Uh, we give a whole package to our agents here at MA, so they can pick like. Do you want the holiday themed one? Do you want the snowman one? Or do you want the one that looks like an office um, or a meeting room, you know? So very customized there. Um, but in reality, you can use anything. You could even use a picture of your dog if you wanted to, to be your background. Um, and you can go online. Now that it's the holiday season, especially, they have a lot of free ones. Uh, so if you literally just Google like free Zoom backgrounds, maybe you want, you know, holiday or or something like that. Uh, there are so, tons of websites that will pop up um, and offering them for free. Sometimes they will have that little watermark in the corner that might be their brand name. So just be careful um, of that. But easy enough to even create your own in Canva. It's just PNG. It's just a, an image, really. Like realistically, I could go online, save any image, and then upload it uh, to use as my background. So let me show you how you do that. Um, first, before I do that, under the video, so we have microphone, we're looking at our black zoom bar here, video, um, in order to change the background, you just click this little extra arrow here. Okay, and that's going to pop up the little drop extra arrow with option to blur your background. That's what I've done right now. If you have a mess behind you, 
Um, I'm in the office today and I got some nice random boxes here. So I thought I'd blur them out. Uh, choose virtual background, choose video filter. Okay, we're gonna look at that too. Those are really funny. Um, avatar, so this this is a little avatar, this person. It's like your own emoji. Um, you can make your own emoji as well. I know some people get really into that. Um, as well, it will allow you to adjust your settings. So I'm gonna click on this right now. And you guys can't see again as I'm customizing, but it's popped up for me to show me the available uh, virtual backgrounds. So you should have the default ones. There should be a few that Zoom's provided, but there, and there should also be a plus button there where you can click to upload uh, any file. So you just have to have a picture saved to your, you know, to your computer, and then you can upload anything. And all you do is just go and click. Okay, let's say I want to use this one. All right, so stop share for a second so you can see this. My lovely holiday martini cocktail making background kit, okay? So like any picture, oh look, I can see, oh, I love that Cassie, is that, who's, who's, that, who's on Santa's lap there? That's Sterling. He's he's okay. sitting on the floor, not on Santa's lap. He's too big to Santa. He's too Santa's heavy lap. to sit on Santa's lap. <laughs> so you can go, yeah, again, you can go personal with it. Um, let me just show you how I would go about um, downloading additional uh, backgrounds for free. Okay. So. This is Google. I'm just gonna go free Zoom background. Okay. And you know, there are probably a billion out there at this point because a lot of people have made some. So you can choose from the natural, the non-natural. If I do holiday even, it's gonna come up with um usually a lot of blog um sites or like magazine here, good housekeeping has free ones um, and this is all that there is to it you just have to go and you know save this image that's actually a really cute hallmark channel oh my gosh <laughs> this is very very hallmark channel yes yeah. so all you have to do right click save image okay now i've saved that to my desktop and now i'm going to go and click my down arrow in zoom on my black menu bar next to the video camera. I'm gonna click choose virtual background. I'm clicking the plus to upload image. And voila, see, I've put my Hallmark background in that I just saved um, online for free from the Good Housekeeping website. And that took me all of like 20 seconds. All right, any questions there? Okay. All right, so yes, this is upload free fun festive backgrounds, unlimited in what you want to add. You can also have uh, videos. They do offer, you know, virtual ones. I think, I think the palm tree swaying in the wind became quite famous when COVID hit and, you know, we all were new to Zoom and nobody knew what a virtual background was. So obviously we just used the default and who doesn't want to look like they're on a beach. So, <laughs> um, and then filters too. So under the same area, under the, again, Zoom black menu bar, the video icon, drop down arrow next to it, I can click choose video filter and this is pretty fun too all right i'm going to show you <laughs> lots of options here so look at mine right now um i hold on should i stop shared so you can see me full screen uh number one okay i don't know at what but you could use this for something um you can do make yourself into a pizza head you can you know you can make it you can be an animal you can make it fun you can be a unicorn and it'll just kind of follow you along on the screen so that's always kind of good uh for a laugh, a laugh or two here's my little pet birdie <laughs> so lots of fun things that we can do there i'm going to put christmas lights up oh that one's fun 
and sunglasses on. <laughs> Okay, um, and then fun filters. You can see I got a little carried away with the unicorn one. Um, and then they call these like, they're also filters, but this blows my mind. Um, you can actually put on fake eyebrows. You can put on, change your nose. Apparently you can change your eyelash color. Uh, your, your, you can put lipstick on your, on your mouth as a filter. Um, so very interesting. I don't know if you guys have seen this before, but funny story, my colleague Jody here, Jody Hills, uh, she had accidentally turned on the eyebrow filter without realizing it. Um, not even knowing that it was a thing that exists. And um, for the longest time, she had these like fuzzy caterpillars following her on the screen. But we didn't know that what it was because we didn't know that <laughs> we didn't we didn't know about these filters, right? They were they were new to us. So um, it took us a while to figure it out and turn it off and figure out that was. I was like, why are your eyebrows always one step behind you when you're moving? Because I will <laughs> just full disclaimer on these. Yes, they are fun, but they don't really follow you on the screen very effectively. So they do appear kind of fake. Um, let's see. Let's see if I can show you guys one. So you can get into. Um, and then there's the avatar one as well. So if you guys are wanting to. Oh, here we go. Lip color. Okay, I can give myself a beard. <laughs> Do you see my beard now? <laughs> Completely transformed, right? <laughs> it's so funny. Okay, so if I turn off, you see I have a beard. And let's make my eyebrows bigger. Look at the shape of my eyebrows change. Isn't that wild? I can even change color. Okay, got a mustache now. <laughs> um, and lips as well. So you can put lipstick on yourself. Oh, there we go. Mustache and uh, bright pink lips. <laughs> Lots of fun to be had here, even brown lips. All right, well, this part was just for fun, but you get the gist. <laughs> so ladies, don't feel like you have to run to the mirror before your Zoom meeting to redo your lipstick because it's all available here. <laughs> All righty. Any questions, guys? I look pretty cool now, I have to say. I'm going to take a screenshot of this. <laughs> All right. Question here. All good. Okay. Okay. Well, you can also see my screen. Yes. Um. So if you have questions on how to record and share, how to find your recordings, um, how to trim them. I do have these links available. So if you want me to email this to you, just shoot me an email. I'll put it, I'll put my email in the chat. So just shoot me an email and ask me and I'm happy to share. Um, but realistically, when you do a recording, has anyone had trouble ever finding them or not knowing where to go? Okay, I'm gonna show you. You can all still see my screen, I hope. So this is in my Zoom, okay? Down on the left here, recordings. So this is, once the, once the meeting is over, I need to give it a few minutes to process the recording. Okay, it's long, the bigger, the longer the meeting, the longer it takes to process, because it's a bigger file. Um, and there we go, it'll show up in my recordings. See, this is it trying to process the one right now, but we're not finished yet. Um, let's go, let's say my MA Tip Tuesday. This one I did before. So you can go and click on this share. And this is a very easy way to, you know, copy the link to share with the passcode that's on it, um, or just put their email in and it'll email it to them um, straight from here. So you don't even have to take that step. Or if you want to, you know, view it or edit it, click, just click to access it. And then there we go, voila, you can view your file, you can download. So this is a good way to record um, videos if you ever need to. 
<laughs> that's a funny face that I paused on. Um, you can copy shareable link. Uh, when you download to it, it downloads the audio separately. Um, it downloads it together as a, as a video, but then it'll also give you the audio separate if you did uh, just want to share audio anytime. It shows you chat files. So as I said, uh, anything that's typed in the chat will be available if it's recorded uh, for viewing afterwards. But if I click on it, this is how I would trim it. So on this one, for instance, I've got a long intro here where I'm not doing or saying it much. Right, so I want to get rid of this, um, and I just do that by hitting these little scissors, this little scissor icon. Okay, speed. You can also speed it up, which is, you know, if it's a slow meeting, <laughs> why not make it done in less time? Uh, so I can trim, and just by sliding these, you know, I'm eliminating um, and cutting out those parts of the video. So if it's a long intro, I'd slide it all the way into where I actually started, and then I would just hit trim. Okay, same thing goes for the end of it. You can do that. You can cut sections out, which is nice because, you know, previously I would have had to download this file and then have like, a, you know, an Adobe editor program or, or um, a video editing program. But now the fact that you can just do this all online is, is it's, it's pretty handy. Um, so by default, they'll probably uh, require a passcode to access the recordings. But when I click this top right share button, um, it'll allow me to change the settings. So if I say, okay, share settings, um, I can turn off. I can say no, you know, no one needs a passcode to view this because uh, I just want everyone to be able to see it. Or maybe it's a confidential meeting with my clients where we did um, you know, our compliance package, compliance rocks, <laughs> not really, but uh, so they have, they have requirements for it, but you can make the path go to anything you want. There we go. And then um, send that to your clients. Uh, yes, I have a hand raised. Martin. Hi, Sarah. Thank you. Uh, hey. Very interesting uh... I've been using this this Zoom thing for about a few years, and I never stopped myself to see what more it could be done. And right, uh, yeah. Give me a quick second here. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. No, I'm glad to hear. I know I had no idea about these. Like, oh, hey, there you go. <laughs> I didn't know about a lot of this stuff either, to be honest. Um, I mean, I might have seen it before, but. It's not that common. I totally forgot that I had this on, by the way. It's not that common. Um, but cool stuff. Yeah. So you can play around with it, even be, you know, cycle with your clients or whatnot. Um, and try to replicate that in-person experience virtually. There you go. Um, but I have a quick question for you. You were showing the recording that you find on the Zoom site. Yeah. So that means it's not in your computer. Okay. Good question. Yeah. So it takes a lot of space. So that uh -huh, would be, uh -huh. That's good to know. Correct. Thank, thank you. Yes. So I'm going to show you the option that, right now because there is an option. You're right. Um, so if I want to schedule a new meeting, by the way, difference between meeting and webinar. Anybody know? Okay, webinars are confidential attendance. So no one can see who else is on the line. They can't even see how many people are on the line. Um, people don't need to be clicked to approve to enter. It's more like if you're doing, you know, a big um, thing that might be presentation that might be a little bit confidential or you don't want people to see attendance numbers, et cetera. Um, whereas a meeting is more interactive, engaging. So, you know, you, you approve people as they come online and um, people have the option of turning on their screens and cameras and they're not confidential. Like everyone knows who is attending the meeting and sees names. Okay. So just to keep in mind, um, but let's go, most of the time we're going to be using meetings. So I'm going to click here, schedule a meeting. And you can plug this in with your Outlook too, by the way, to the point where when you go to book an Outlook meeting, um, you'll have a button that you can you know how in Outlook or same with Google a Calendar, whatever it is you use, it says like, where is this meeting? And you can put a phone number, you can put a, a Zoom link with whatnot. Um, if you're still going on to your Zoom uh, website 
to generate that meaning, you're wasting time because it's so easy. Um, as long as your Zoom is connected to your calendar to your, and I'm again, I'm going to use Outlook as an example. Um, when I set a calendar meeting, uh, meeting invite and send it around, there is an option to select it as on Zoom. And then it automatically, uh, depending on the time, date, et cetera, of the meeting, it automatically generates the Zoom link for me and includes it um, in the meeting invite to my client. So maybe I'll quickly pop in and show you how to do that after this. Um, okay, so we're going to schedule a new meeting. Let's just say... Um, client consultation, whatever, whatever this may be. Okay, put in name, uh, add description too if you want. Like, let's look over your doc. Please come prepared. Da, 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 da. Okay, time date. Um, how long is it going to be? Time zone. Okay, be careful with this, especially if you're working in between different ones. It can be confusing. Recur me, recurring meeting. So if you're wanting to book maybe a weekly team meeting or something um, and to the point where you don't have to generate and send it on the link every week, um, make it a recurring one, okay? And then you'll have, you'll, um, you won't have to uh, create the link again. The link will remain the same. Attendees, so you can put people's names in here or you can just share the link with them afterwards. If you don't know, you know, everyone yet. Registration. So if registration is not um, checked off, then it will allow anyone to just click the short link to join and jump on without even you know putting in their info. Whereas I usually require registration. Um, and that's what you see pop up, you know, when you click to join today, it said if you hadn't registered before, just once your name and your email. Um, and the reason why I like to do that is because I like to know first off who's you know who's on my sessions um, and have their follow-up. Uh, information if I said I'd send around an email of something to you guys that's how I know uh, you know your email and who is attending and it's very good for privacy and security as well so I would always recommend to require registration when they do register too it offers a calendar invite to go e via email to go directly into their uh, outlook so it is in your best interest as well to have that extra reminder um, then you can go through um, you know other options passcode um, do I want to have everyone wait into a uh, waiting room until I kind of, you know, let them on on the session? Um, and then video, do you want your video automatically on or off when you log on? And same with your participants. Um, audio, can they dial in? You know, is that an option? And then down here is where you pick the recording. Okay. Um, and you can even mute participants upon entry if it's a larger one. But by doing this, and this is the option that uh, Martin asked about. Now, as soon as I start this meeting, it's going to be recording it automatically. It will announce that it's recording. Um, but without me having to remember to hit that record button, it's going to record. OK, and here's where I pick where I want it to record. So if I record on my local computer, uh, Martin was correct in that it would come onto my computer um, to where I can just access it directly in my computer afterwards. I don't normally do that, though. I normally do in the cloud. I just find it way easier to share. Um, and then you can always download it from the cloud. The cloud being, by the way, this recordings tab over here that I just clicked on and showed you my recordings. That's what in the cloud means. It just means it's on your Zoom account. You can log in on any computer, any device, and your recordings will be there. You can download it um, and you can share it. Um, and for spacing wise too on your computer, because videos tend to be large files, um, we don't need to take up that much space. So it is better again to keep it on a cloud um, rather than record on your local computer. Um, okay, any other questions? All right, I'm just going to pop up. I guess I should turn off these filters. <laughs> I keep forgetting they're there. I guess I should. Oh, I just saw a button that said apply studio, apply filters to all future meetings. <laughs> Probably don't want to do that. <laughs> 
<laughs> that would mean next time I logged on, I'd have a beard and a mustache and it could be a <laughs> totally, totally a professional meeting. That would be very funny actually. Um, okay. I'm going to show you how to, how it looks when you've linked your calendar, how easy it is to create a zoom link. Okay. So client consult. All right. I just went into my outlook calendar. I clicked add a meeting, you know, the same way you normally would put in the title, add the required people. So maybe I'm sending this to my, to my coworker, Jody. Um, and what's beautiful here is now I have under these top three. Okay. Again, it's the more option because there's not enough space on the screen. So, um, and you do have to link your Zoom account um, in order for this to show up. Um, I think if you're logged on to, if you've downloaded the mobile uh, desktop app, sorry, and logged in, um, then you should be able to easily do it. And again, this is all free. Um, so by clicking this three arrow Zoom, add Zoom meeting. There we go. Automatically adds the meeting, the link, the dial in, um, I've got my, you know, my other participants already on this meeting. So all I do is I hit send and now this will be in their calendar. They've got the link, they've got, you know, the time blocked off in their calendar. It really can't be any easier. I do not need to go into my, um, my, my, um, desktop and create it there and then copy and paste. And that's honestly what I was doing at first until I realized that this cool tool uh, existed and this has saved me a lot of time. And one thing I want to point out there too, is if I then send this, okay, I make this a meeting and then Jody comes back and says, uh, can we make it half an hour later or something? You can easily pull up this, um, the, the meeting invite again and just change the time. Okay. And the Zoom link will adjust. So you don't have to go and, and you know, delete this and then click it again. Um, it'll adjust the time for you and it'll appear in your Zoom account for you under your meetings. So just need to do it in the one place, just the one click. Uh, okay, yes, question, the free or pro account. Um, so the free account is, is fine. Um, I think it is limited to about 45 minute long meetings though. So, yeah, exactly. It has a time limit. So it's going to kick you off um, after 45 minutes. So if you're in the depth of, of a conversation uh, with a client and you don't want it to be disrupted uh, to where that link is then expired and you have to, you know, send around a new one, I would suggest trying out maybe the pro account, but give it a go with the free and see if that's enough, you know, see, see if that's all that you need. Um, and um yeah, that allows you to do kind of unlimited timing. Now, if you're on the free one and you the 45 minutes is up, it, it boots you off. You can just go on and create a new meeting link and share that new meeting link. Like there's no limit to how many times you can create a new meeting and jump back on, um, but it is a pain in the butt and then disruption to have to actually do that. Um, how do you add the Zoom app on the calendar? I don't honestly um, completely, because it, it, it depends on the calendar um, that you're using you know a lot of people use different systems um, but I would start by downloading like you know go to Google Chrome or whatever you use uh, download the Zoom app for Mac or for or for a PC you know log in there and then um, oh yeah you're welcome no thanks Deb and uh, log in there and then see how that connects and then also honestly guys any questions you have just Google like Zoom how to connect here, I'll do it for you. How to Zoom. There we go. It's already there. Zoom to Outlook. There we go. Open the app, click on the top ribbon, preferences, calendar, select Zoom. Okay, that easy. So all these instructions can be found on Zoom. And again, Zoom has their own instructions as well. A lot of like vloggers and stuff. This is this is not by Zoom, this article, but I'm sure, you know, sometimes they're actually better than the professional ones because they're just more user targeted. Um, okay, let's see, where are we at here? All right, any other questions for me? Okay, I hope this was helpful, guys.
Now everyone go and put on beard filters and uh, <laughs> and wild backgrounds. <laughs> And make sure it's selected to uh, show up automatically in every meeting so that you have a beard from here on out. <laughs> Gentlemen doing Movember, or if you did, <laughs> that's a good cheat hack. <laughs> All right, Leona, thank you. Good. Well, thanks so much for joining me, guys. Um, again, reach out. My email is in the chat, Sarah at mtgarc.ca uh, if you do have questions or want me to send you some of that source material but it is just google away as well um, and I'll see you guys back in the new year we'll probably be looking at the last uh, Monday of January let me know topics interests like I'm thinking of diving into you know new year planning but if there's something else you know that you you want to hear about let me know um, and I'm happy to try and accommodate all right thanks Sarah have a great birthday tomorrow Thank you. Oh, thank you, Ron. You're so sweet. I don't know how you do that, but <laughs> magic. We're gonna do magic. Take care. Bye bye. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. <laughs>